Welcome back to the Journey to the Farlands. All right. Okay, I got a bunch of stuff here that I need to get rid of. But let's get out of here. Quickly check about for any nasties. I don't see any. That's good. All right. Let's uh, plug up the hidey hole. Locate west, which is that away, and proceed onwards to the far lands after I take a minute and throw some things away. And one stack of dirt will be plenty. That's better. Now I need to get logs and wool today. So we'll get that at the ready and see what I can find. Alrighty, so here we are, moving onwards, walking to the west, Minecraft Beta 1.7.3, on a journey to the Far Lands, walking and talking and answering questions along the way, because just walking with no conversation of some kind or another would be, well, that would be painfully boring. As it is, talking, whether it's me rambling on about one subject or another, or answering questions, or what have you, it gives uh, enough of a context to this that it can be considered to be a kind of a vlog sort of thing, except that it happens in Minecraft. Or if it's just something that you listen to, uh, you could call it, you could think of it almost as a podcast. If you were to listen rather than watch. But in any event, doing this, partly because I want to walk to the Far Lands, and partly because it is also a fundraiser to raise funds for Child's Play Charity, an organization that gets books and toys and games to kids and hospitals all over, and uh, that kind of does a lot towards making their hospital stays easier to deal with by getting their minds off of the problems and procedures and surgeries and whatever other things that doctors come up with to do. Oh, quite an extensive desert. And so on. Like I said, making things bearable. And that is a worthy cause, I do believe. And so, when I started this, I set out to raise $6,346.45 uh, of which, so far, has been raised a total of, well, I started out using the old chip-in widget from way back, and then that widget disappeared, so what I do is, currently, it's using a widget that is provided by Child's Play itself, and what I do is I add the number that that widget shows to what the chipping widget uh, used to have on it before it disappeared. And that gets a total of $609.12 raised so far, which is 9.6% of the goal. And that means that there only needs to be another 570 $10 donations to achieve that goal. And when you break it down like that, it makes it sound not quite so overwhelming as saying $6,000. <laughs> you know, it, it, it makes it sound a lot less overwhelming, a lot less of a astronomical kind of goal. And so that's how I'm saying it. That uh, 570 $10 donations, and that brings this thing to the achievement of a fundraising goal. And then 
when that happens, we start talking about a live stream of F3-ness in which I will continue walking to the Far Lands on a live stream for a, a good long while. I'm not going to say some specific set amount of time, but a good long while. And then near the end of which, partly which might be indicated by difficulties in my ISP being extra slow or whatever, but at the end of that live stream, I find a suitable spot upon which to build some kind or form of monument, and then after selecting which block that's going to be, I press F3 and we find out how far I've come. Now, the first time I did this was on March the 25th of 2017, well, this year. And at that point, I had gone a little over 610,000 blocks. And I am very interested to see how far I will have gone by the time this uh, fundraising goal is reached. I I'm going to be very interested in that. And so, we're going onwards. In any event, though, no pressure, really, because this journey is not about the pressure in any way. It is not about pressure nor... Uh, schedules or deadlines or hurry up and get there quickly or anything like that. It is in fact about the journey. It is about this wonderful, fantastic scenery that you see generated here in Minecraft Beta 1.7.3, which by the way is in fact one of my, if not the favorite version of Minecraft that I have ever played. It was a great version, and the terrain generation, truly awesome, I sincerely do believe. One thing you'll never find in Beta 1.7.3 is an ocean three or four thousand blocks long. I've seen that in modern versions. I sailed across one once. It took me, I think it was four Minecraft days. <laughs> yeah, that was a long, that's a long line, a long time to take to sail across an ocean, even in Minecraft. But we move onwards, ever onwards, talking, yakking, yammering, and, uh, sometimes even answering questions or discussing whatever topics. Oh, that looks cool. All right, screenshot, onward. That might even be good for making a thumbnail out of, wait a minute, I just thought of something. Yeah. Get up a little ways. All right, that's too far. Yeah, there we go. All right. Wait a minute. There. That's the screenshot. Just before it turns night. Uh, all right. It's turning night. So 
Let's do the elevated sleeping platform. Drop to bed. And sleep through that night. Ah, oh, pardon me. That was a sudden need to cough that I don't think anybody wanted to hear. So I paused and muted. Anyway, moving onwards. Uh, let's see. Speaking of questions, there is uh, one that hap was asked on a recent vlog where the person whose name I do not remember right now, sorry about that, I'm terrible with names and I don't mean anything by it, I'm just terrible with names, but uh, somebody said that, uh, well they asked if there was any way I could at least show a screenshot of my ship in Elite Dangerous, they were also asking if I was playing just the base game or the base game with some or all of the DLC or what. And uh, now this was partly answered in the comments, but I'll go ahead and do it here too. Uh, I had been interested in Elite Dangerous since the first time I saw something about it. Oh, I would say about a year a year or so before last June, May, last May, last June, right on there, a year before that, I was interested in Elite, and I had decided I was going to save up money and get it, so I started squirreling away a little bit of money here and there, you know, put a couple of bucks into an envelope and just not take it out for anything, and until I had enough, and late last May, about the 27th or so, I found a deal on the Humble Bundle store. And that deal was for the base game and for the Horizons DLC, and it also included some free paint jobs and whatnot for ships. And I jumped on it. Because this was the base game plus the DLC, which, by the way, there's only the one DLC as of this recording, and that's the Horizons DLC. The base game plus the DLC for 40 US dollars. I couldn't beat that with a stick, and I just, I, I went for it. And, uh after a very long download time, because it was rather huge, I started, I started with it, started playing, and I took a good day or so in that first play, that first time playing, to uh, a good, probably six or seven hours, at least half of which was figuring out controls and remapping controls to something that suited me and made sense and whatnot and getting a general feel for how the game works and how to do stuff. It helped that I had seen a lot of Elite Dangerous videos, although a good number of those were outdated. But still, they were helpful. And uh, I did. A little, I discovered the exploration aspect of the game. And uh, I really liked that because it was a low stress kind of thing. Basically, you're flying around scanning stars, planets, and moons. And then when you sell the data that you acquire doing that, you get a pretty decent chunk of change, let me tell you. I did that for a week, about a week and a half, I think. 
And after a week and a half of doing that, just around the bubble, which is what they call the area of space populated by humans, which is basically a sphere about 150 light years in radius around Sol, the human star system, you know, the one where Earth is. And I had enough after a week and a half or so of doing that to buy an ASP Explorer and to get the thing outfitted decently for a long trip. And there was a, a, a some shakedown cruises and one sort of long trip where I discovered there was something I did wrong about my outfitting and I went back and fixed that and then finally on the 22nd of June I left starport for the last time well that was the last time I left a starport I undocked from Morrison dock on the 22nd of June 2017 and began a long trip. I have not been to a starport since then. I am now about 5,500 light years away from the bubble, and I get out further every day. I have been to 715 star systems, currently 5,487 light years out from my starter point. And I have no intention of turning back anytime soon, headed for the galactic rim, thinking about the idea of circumnavigating the galaxy, which I think would be a cool adventure. <laughs> it really, I do. And, yeah. So, that's what I've been doing, that's what I got. And uh, as for the request about screenshots... That's easy. I have one right here that I took last night. It shows the ship. Uh, the paint job is somewhat the worse for wear. Because uh, close in encounters with stars while scooping fuel can sometimes be a little rough on the paint job. It gets cooked pretty bad. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if by the time I finally return to, star par return to a starport, there isn't a single scrap of paint left on the ship by then. It would not surprise me at all. In fact, I'm actually kind of looking forward to it, just for the giggles. <laughs> yeah, weird, I know, but what the heck. Uh, let's see. No, that doesn't go through. So, well, it goes through more than that does. Anyway, so that's it right there. Uh, I actually hadn't planned on talking about Elite that much this time around. I might have uh, gone far enough as to update how far out I'm at or how many systems. But I'm aware that not everybody wants to hear a lot about that. So, anyway, there you go. There's the screenshot. The ship has seen some better days, but it's in pretty good shape. It looks worse than it is. That's just the paint job that's all torn up. In any event, let's see. What else have I been doing? Uh, Creativers. I've been playing a fair amount of Creativers. Uh... A lot more than you would think based on how many episodes I've done lately but you see recently in the most recent update about October 18th I think it was uh, in that update they started a, uh, a Halloween event and in this Halloween event they have this thing that they call a pump cure, which is basically a 
creature from within the game called Miru that has some kind of a strange pumpkin-looking head now for the event, that uh, the story is that evil ghosts have stolen all of his candy. And the player's objective is to take these haunted idols, set them down, that activates them, and these evil ghosts and whatnot come out to fight. And so you then fight them. And along the way of doing that, some of the loot that you get from them includes the aforementioned candy. And when you get enough of it, you head over, you look out and find one of these Punkiru things. And really, if you look for them, they're all over the place. And when you find them, you can then do a little bit of business. You trade them the candy, and you get, in exchange for that, chests, loot chests, prizes, basically. And you can give them the, get the chests for 20 candy, or 50 candy, or 100. And the thing is, if you get the ones for 100, those loot chests are guaranteed to have recipes in them. The recipes in question will be a random selection of either the uh, Halloween recipes from last year's Halloween event, or one of the four, one of four special recipes from this year, from this year's Halloween event. And so, since I've got all the Halloween recipes that were that came out last year, I'm looking to get the four special recipes for this year. So far, I have one of them. And the way you get these, you you know, like I said, uh, you get these haunted idols. You get them uh, every two hours. You can no every four hours. You get one that you can collect at the main menu and then redeem in whatever world you want. And uh, you set the thing down. It, it it activates. You fight the mobs. And then when it's all said and done, there is loot chests and so on. And some of those loot chests include more haunted idols. Some of the loot chests include in infused idols, which have basically some stronger mobs in it and whatnot, and bigger prizes. And then some of those will end up getting you the unleashed idols which have still harder mobs and still bigger prizes and so the last time I did a round of fighting these things now mind you I'm doing it on a single player world and I'm doing it solo it's not excessively difficulty it, it's not about any kind of difficulty. It is, however, time-consuming. The last time I did a round of this, I fought 30 of those idols. Not all at once, mind you. One after the other. Fight one, put another one down, fight that, put another one down, and so on. I went through 30 of them. It took me in the neighborhood of an hour and a half. Currently, I have 42 of the Haunted Idols. And about an hour after this recording stops, about an hour after I 
after this recording started, then I will have two more. I'll end up with 44. Because, like I said, they show up every four hours in the main menu, and you can collect them there every four hours. And so, 44 haunted idols. I have five infused idols in a chest waiting to be used. And I also have, from the last time around, 20 of the unleashed idols. So, even if I didn't get any more, that is a total of, oh, 62, possibly 64 of those things to deal with. That's going to take two, possibly three hours to do solo. <laughs> Uh, like I said, it's not overly hard. It just takes a while. Because each critter has to be whacked a certain number of times with a sword in order to dispatch it. Ooh. Another screenshot. Because why not? And there's a zombie around someplace, but hello. Oh boy, these guys must be right down below. I'm just a little curious. Okay, that's the limit of my curiosity. I'm done. There is obviously a good size chamber full of those things, and I was thinking probably with a spawner, but I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time chasing it. Besides, it's already into afternoon on the third day. I need to be looking for a good place for an overnight hidey hole. And overnight, end of the episode hidey hole. That sort. It looks like it could even be beachfront property. <laughs> cool. Anyway... So, a little while after I finish with this episode, once I get it started uploading, I am going to dig out creativers, and I'm going to spend a bunch of time, probably most or even all of that part, the idol fighting thing off camera, just to get them done and collect enough of the candies so that I can get a good number of those chests that are guaranteed to have recipes in them in hopes that I will be able to collect the other three of those special recipes this year before the event is over, probably sometime in the middle of next month, in the middle of November. I need boats, and I still haven't collected wood. Okay. There we go. All right. So, uh, I'm going to be working on that get all those things cleared out and besides in addition to the special recipes that will be in some of those things uh, there is also another a number of other good loot type things in there 
a, a good number of healing potions. I've collected a couple of hundred healing potions so far of the advanced variety, the advanced healing potion. And similarly decent numbers of speed potions and fire resist and corruption resist and speed potions and so on and so forth. Good numbers of those, plus good numbers of other various and sundry things. Like, for example, I've got enough obsidian armor to uh, fill a couple of good-sized chests, which is almost a shame because I won't use it. I have better. <laughs> uh, so I probably won't use it. There's no point. And because it's a single-player world, you know, it's not like I can just save it to one side and give it to new players coming to the world because there are no new players coming to the world. I set it up that way on purpose. And now I need to set up digging into a hidey hole on purpose. Uh, don't have much of a wall. Well, we got a little bit of one here. Yeah, there we go. Get dug in here. Commence to getting some light down. This, throw a torch on it. Okay. Install a bed. And make some more. next time uh, and I already have three boats that should do all right well I think that's pretty much going to be it for this episode uh, I say thanks for watching and we'll see you next time meantime you can stop by tinfoilchef.com slash donate to donate to child's play charity very worthy cause definitely worth your consideration Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I am out of here.